Sean Kincaid Show on 97.5, The Fanatic, Philadelphia. To go to the Comcast Business Hotline, where every day in business is a big day, let Comcast Business keep you ready for what's next. He is a, a Hall of Famer. He is a Philadelphia legend. And he's now an accomplished author, too. And uh, here he is, Brian Dawkins, joining us on the John Kincaid Show. Brian, we appreciate you making time for us this morning. No, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. We are so excited that you'll be coming out to Fan Fest tomorrow and people get a chance to, to get out there and see you. We're trying to find out more, though, about Brian Dawkins, the author. How did this even come about? The idea yes. that, that you would be that you would decide you wanted to put pen to paper, thoughts to paper, and try to help people out in what I consider not to be a football book. It's a life skills book. And, and that's what it is. Uh, one of the things that has happened is me being able to look back over my life and see some of the things that have blessed me along the way, some of the pains that I've gone through and grown through, I like to say. And I think a lot of people look at me and, and think that everything has always worked out. Like, I'm always winning, <laughs> and that's far from the case. And so this book was something that was kind of given to me um, to to write. And, and it's really to write to, uh, to allow people to see past what they think my life has been, to see some of the things that I've had to go through, yes, and grow through, as I continue to call it, to allow me to develop the mindset that I had to develop going through some of the things that I went through in order for me to, to have the, the success that I have had and the success I'm yet to, to have. But it's all from a mindset, from a spiritual place, but also from a mindset place of how I've seen my, my past uh, failures and setbacks. I uh, want everybody to check out BrianDawkins.com, where you can pick up a copy of Blessed by the Best, uh, and you can also get an autographed copy, if you wish. And Brian will also be out with us at FanFest tomorrow, which will be awesome. But Brian, what I was shocked by is is that you know I got a copy of your book, and I picked it up, and I thought I was going to be reading really football stories. I, I guess I just went in <laughs> thinking that's what it would be all about. And I now know why you would want to be booked as a motivational speaker, <laughs> because a lot of the stories are not only about things that happened to you, but maybe things that you had to sort of change in your own approach and your own life to end up getting to where you got. That's right. That's right. And so it, it, it's that process of, of understanding that we, first of all, we have, we have control over a lot more than we truly understand when it comes to our thoughts. So the thoughts leads to the next step, and sometimes it's what we say to ourselves and the constant conversations that we have to ourselves about ourselves is so important. And so with this, this book has a whole bunch of different things in it of the people that have blessed me along the way, the situations that were at the time seemed to be uh, painful, and they were painful at the moment. But again, because of what I took out of that period, now that has been a part, has been added to the values that I have, to the character that I have, to the pursuit to do great things that I have. A lot of that stuff has come through, and I said this in my Hall of Fame speech, that a lot of the successes that I've had in my life, the majority of them have come on the back end of pain. And so that pain is, is sometimes the thing that ushers us into a deeper dive in the things that we need to change about ourselves in order for us to have a semblance of success. And the success I had obviously took me all the way to uh, to be in the Hall of Famer. Brian, your talk of mental wellness since you've retired and all has has really gripped a lot of people, and and it affects everybody. You know, you may have a family member; it may be yourself. And I listen intently when you do talk about it. And the, the question I want to ask you is this: When you were playing, was it easier to get through your mental wellness because you had that outlet of football, or has it been easier since you stopped playing football to get through it? So when I went through that period, my rookie year, that was a very dark, dark, deep dive into the depression that I went into. And so during that time, I had to do some deep diving into myself to see some of the things that was making that be the case. So I had to go get help, and with the help of Emmett and my wife, I did go get the help. But what I developed is things that I do every day now going forward that have had me winning ever since winning that battle on a daily basis. So it's not something that I wake up in the morning and um, I'm okay because 
I've done that thing all those years ago, and so I'm okay today. No, this is a daily thing that I get up, and it's a, it's a, it's a routine. It's a discipline, I call it. I wake up, I get up, I pray, I read, I meditate, and I journal every morning. This is an every morning thing. This is not something that I do once again every once in a while or just do when times get tough. No, this is a regimen that I do every morning now. And because of that, I get, I'm strengthened. I can stay winning, as I call it, because I do that, because I pre- prepare myself mentally, spiritually, and even physically, because I do some push ups in the morning. <laughs> for, Wait a minute, for you work to- out? I didn't. You work out. I didn't realize that, Brian. Just a little bit. <laughs> that's, that's that's on top of the working out that I do. You know, in Mentally. My regular work. Yeah, yeah, and Brian. Again, you have to do these things. Uh, this weekend, uh, you know very well what it's like to have a home opener uh, with a newfound hope for a team here with a young young uh, quarterback leader, but a lot of veteran pieces in place. It's only one week. Uh, but I know you watched Jonathan Gannon in that defense last week intently. You watch it differently than probably 99.9% of all other people. What stood out to you from the game last week from the defensive side of the ball? Well, first of all, they didn't give up, they, they didn't give up points. So Atlanta did move the ball a little bit in the first half, but they didn't give up points. That's always one of the things that Jim always talked about is the points. Points, turnovers, and you know, change of possession. Those are the things that he always talked about. So when I look at that defense, you saw a defense that did not give up points. And then later on in the game, you made them one-dimensional because the offense scored points, the defense kept the points down, so now that Atlanta became one-dimensional. So that means that the D-line can get after the Cats and, 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 go home and, and get home, and that's what they continue to do down after down after down. So we'll see if that formula will continue to have to be successful, that they'll get off the field when they need to get off the field, not giving up touchdowns, just give up field goals, if anything. And then the offense can be as explosive as they were. Again, this is, Atlanta's a different team. Now, I'm not going to – every win counts, and you don't, you know, poo-poo any win, win in the National Football League, but we do un- understand that Atlanta's a struggling team. So we'll see how they go up against this uh, – this um, a better San Fran team uh, this coming week. Coming up Sunday at Lincoln Financial Field at the Pepsi Plaza, you will have a book signing with Brian Dawkins of his book, Blessed by the Best, his journey to Canton and beyond, and you get the hardcover, get an autograph prior to the Eagles 49ers game from 11 to 12 at the Pepsi Plaza. Uh, Brian, one of the things, though, that you know, you know the Philly sports fan, you know us. We want a defense that is out there leaving quarterbacks like the body bag game. We, you know, we want, we want, we want quarterbacks being peeled off the turf. With the personnel the Eagles have right now, it, is it maybe smart to to resist our urge of what we want and to just let Jonathan Gannon approach things his way? Well, you have to see what type of defensive coordinator he is. Right, so we don't we don't necessarily know what he loves to do. We'll see that in the next couple of weeks because obviously they're not going to show everything in one game. They're not going to show pretty much anything in the preseason. So you don't really know what type of def- defensive coordinator that he is. Now you've known who he studied under, but you still don't know who he is. So he may be someone that's going to rev up the blitzes and begin to to, to come at quarterbacks from all different angles. We don't know that. We'll we'll soon find out. Brian, I'm going to switch this around a little bit. If you were a defensive coordinator going up against the Eagles, not not in specifics, but knowing that they have a mobile quarterback, a pretty good running back, great offensive line, young wide receivers, capable tight ends, what would be your general feeling of how you'd go about that? First of all, keep your, keep the quarterback contained, not let him get outside of the pocket, but put, put pressure up in his face as quickly as possible. To get it, to get his eyes down on the rush instead of up the field, and obviously you have to stop the running uh, running attack. And if they commit to running the football with what they have, <laughs> one of the best backs in the in the league, in my opinion, in the backfield, um, you know, you would have to do what you need to do to stop that running attack to make them then one dimensional, and then put all the onus on the quarterback to see if he can hold up. Yeah, Brian, you talk about mental wellness so much these days, and I can't wait to read the book myself. Uh, Sunday's going to be an emotional day, not only for Jalen Hurts, but for Nick Sirianni, who is you know walking out to his new hometown's biggest stage. If you could give each of them 
a, a, a word of advice about you know the emotions that Sunday is going to bring uh, and mentally preparing themselves for this this big debut in town, what would it be? Wow, just breathe, <laughs> breathe. Yeah, <laughs> make sure you're breathing. Make sure you're breathing. You being able to control those emotions. I know for me, anyway, it was it was tough to con- always control my emotions, um, but being able to breathe and to focus on the task at hand. So emotion is not letting emotions take control, but focus on the task at hand. And for him, it's uh, getting that team prepared and ready, and emotionally, physically, mentally ready to go out and hopefully dominate this game. Got to tell you, BrianDawkins.com is where you can get a copy of the book. If you're not going to be at the game on Sunday for the autograph signing from 11 to noon, you can go to BrianDawkins.com. You can even get an autograph copy there. And, Brian, I can just tell you a couple Saturdays ago reading the book, and I found myself sitting down figuring I had like a half hour to kill, and around an hour and 45 minutes later I was putting the book down. It was uh, I, I noticed a lot of things that connected. I consider myself very planned, very organized, very, but I'm very intense. And there are a lot of things, a lot of pieces of advice and insights that you offer that can help people who even feel they've got it all together because none of us really have it all together, do we? No. And, and and that's the key to growth, right? To know that you know a whole lot, but there's so much still yet to be discovered. And then when you keep and stay in a learning posture that I want to continue to grow as I continue to, 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 to go in, 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 in my life, then you're open to those different avenues and different um, um, blessings to open up a new way of thinking about something that you were cemented in. Sometimes we're cemented in this thing. I do this thing. This is a specific way. Then somebody comes along with a different recipe and be like, wow, that actually tastes a little better. So let me, uh, let me try that out. We cannot wait to see it tomorrow at FanFest too. So we will uh, be uh, looking forward to having you meet all of our listeners. And then uh, everybody get out on Sunday and meet Brian. If you're going to Lincoln Financial Field, go meet the legendary Brian Dawkins. And I don't mean old. I just mean legendary Brian. I'm just making sure I didn't say <laughs> anything. Legendary, brother. I, 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 all that old, I'm seasoned, brother. Seasoned, <laughs> yes. Well, we will see your seasoning tomorrow on the big stage with us. Brian, thank you so much for getting up with us today. We appreciate it. No, appreciate you having me. Y'all be blessed. Thanks, Brian. John Kincaid Show on 97.5, The Fanatic, Philadelphia.